make some fast food. I say let's go to Burger King. You prefer Roy Rogers. I think you eat anything. Anything would be better than greasy meat and soggy fries. You drive to McDonald's, get six Big Macs and cherry pies. We ate the fast food. Chewed it up and swallowed it down. You make sounds so rude. Open the window before I pass out. God, this song is boring. Every verse sounds just the same. I know it's folk music, but does it have to sound so lame? I remember when I was writing, writing down the song. Didn't think it would go so long. Took about an hour to get it done. Who'd have thought it'd be number one? But I only know two chords on this guitar. I cannot believe that I got this far. Got this far. Got this far. See, I think this song's got a problem. I started off singing about fast food, then I went off on a tangent. I started singing about myself. Boy, my hair beats funny. I think I look just like Buckwheat. Sing like Joni Mitchell. Use a lot of words that never rhyme. So remember when you hear me playing on the air. I'm the one with the goofy hair. Album's doing really well, so why am I depressed as hell? Cause I write tunes that just go on too long. I have no idea how to end this song, end this song, end this song. President of the United States. You know, nothing gets me aroused more than the sight of a, a big, wrinkly, heavy set woman coming at me with snow white hair. <laughs> oh, I tell you, now that really fires up my boiler. Hey, ladies, Barbara Bush doesn't worry about looking older, so why should you? Try new First Lady Clairol. It's kinder, gentler conditioners. It'll leave your hair looking whiter than. than. Well, any neighborhood that I've ever lived in. First Lady Clairol. It's so easy to use. Just apply liberally. Read my lips. Don't say liberal. And before you know it, you'll look just like your husband's mother, too. And you'll be buying your clothes at the big gal's department at Kmart. Just look for the big white bottle. Or, of course, the little brown one. First Lady Clairol. Once more, just remember now, introduce yourself. And read what's on the paper in front of you. You got it? Yeah, 
Yeah, I got it. Okay, fine. Dwayne Stop, Substance Abuse Awareness Campaign. This is take nine. <coughs> Dwayne, Dwayne, that's your cue. Oh, uh, right. Anytime you're ready. We're ready, Dwayne. Dwayne, go. Hi, this is Dwayne Stomp of Black Tooth. Kids, when you drink and drive... No, Dwayne. No, no, cut, cut. It's not when you drink and drive. Oh, a rat, rat. Uh, let me do it again. Yeah, good idea. Uh, this is Dwayne Stomp, PSA, take ten. Hi, this is Dwayne Stomp. When I drink and drive, I'll... Cut, Dwayne, cut, Dwayne. Dwayne, this spot is supposed to be against driving while intoxicated. What? Never mind. Uh, we'll do it one more time. And remember, say, don't do drugs. And if you must drink this holiday weekend, don't drive. You got it? I told you I got it. Fine. Uh, Dwayne Stomp, PSA, take, uh, what is it, 11. Ah, I'm Dwayne Stomp telling you, if you do drugs this weekend... Don't drive. Wrong again, Dwayne. It's don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. That's what I said. No, it's not. It's not even close to what you said. You come in this booth, I'll show you how close it was, Sherlock. We're going to do it again, Dwayne. Say, don't do drugs. If you must drink this holiday weekend, do not drive. Take 12. This is Dwayne Stump. Weekends are for drunks do drugs. Okay, Dwayne, thank you very much for coming in. Uh, I think with a little editing, we've got something we can use. Don't do drugs. And if you must drink this holiday weekend, don't drive. Hi, everybody. This is Safety Officer Mike Tyson, heavyweight champ of the world, your baddest dude around, the baddest driver around, too, with your driving tip of the day. A few months ago, I, I, I was in a Kmart with my ex-wife, Robin Givens. I can't believe it. Maybe you read about her in the papers. Anyway, she, she buys me one of these cute little Garfield cats with a suction cup feet, which, which I stuck on the window in my car when we left the store. On the way home, I drove into a tree. I can't believe it. Maybe you read about it in the papers. I couldn't see the tree because a damn cat was in my way. Robin said, said I was stupid to stick Garfield on the windshield. I mean, that, that's really bitchy to me. I mean, call the heavyweight champ of the world stupid? Now, that's stupid. So I faked, I faked Robin a left hand. I took her out with a clean right hand, knocked her right down completely. First, a standing eight count. I couldn't believe it. Maybe you read about that in the papers. Anyway, my attitude toward Garfield the Cat has really been affected greatly. I mean, in fact... If I see you driving around with Garfield the Cat in your car, I may lose complete control. I don't know what will happen. Maybe you'll read about that in the papers, too. Coming to a theater near you. Two cops. One young. One old. One black. One white. One on the tape. One on the up and up. One dead. One alive. Two cops. One gay. One straight. One a Luther. The other an Episcopal. One on a high cholesterol diet. One a semi-vegetarian. One with an attitude problem. One mired in a moral dilemma. Two cops. One a Republican. One a Democrat. One a redhead. One a blonde. One fat. One thin. One five foot four. One six foot one three. One a slop. One a fashion plate. One kind to his mother. One never calls. Two cops. Starring that funny guy from TV. And that character actor who's been around forever and I can never remember his name. Two cops. From the same kinds of people who brought you stakeout. Shakedown. Steady. Ready. Plenty scared. Legal weapon. Colors. Beverly Hills 1. Two. Three. Four. The Odd Couple. Streets of San Francisco. You get the picture. Two cops. They're like everyone you've ever known. And his brother. Two cops. Playing under a variety of titles at every other theater in town this summer. See it with someone who drives you right out of your skull but you just can't help loving him in spite of yourself, you know? Two cops. With BG. And R. Little furry creatures near the highway in the dead of the night 
a flashing silhouette of deer crossing in the glow of my bright headlights. Is that the neighbor's cat I see up ahead in the wash of a corner street light? I'm not aiming, they just never see me coming. And I guess that's why they say every car has a horn. And I wonder if possum ever mourn. Just like every roadkill leaves us a little. When some slum meal tries to put me down and says he has a larger congregation, I tell him right away, now listen here, good Nick, ain't you heard of my show? It's number one in the nation. All his face, give him a dollar, put so be pretty sure. Like you would say, you're In fact, you encounter them hey, every day. Hey, you just parked in front of my driveway. What are you, a butthead? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, sorry. I'll just uh, back out over my lawn. We call no them problem. buttheads, but they're actually the unfortunate victims of cranial rectosis, a condition which causes people to lose all feeling for others simply because their head is jammed up their... Well, you get the picture. Uh, excuse me, but this is a no-smoking section. So, what are you going to do about it, cupcake? <laughs> Don't do anything. He's a terminal butthead. <clears throat> a public service reminder from the committee to replace lab animals with buttheads. You've taken piano lessons for 17 years, and here's what you can play. Depressing, isn't it? But hey, don't worry, be Bobby! Introducing the I Want to Sound Like Bobby McFerrin Home Study Course, an exciting new program that'll be music to your mouth. Why spend big bucks on expensive instruments when we can stuff an entire orchestra down your throat? And you can master any style of music at all, like the bossa nova, classic rock and roll. 
you can even learn the big band sound. Just picture yourself at parties with friends sitting around your mouth asking for all their favorite tunes. Hey, do on the road again. Yes, this could be you. So enroll now in the I Want to Sound Like Bobby McFerrin Home Study Course and put your future right between your cheeks. He's back, and he's stalking a psycho who wants to make the Chicago Cubs pennant contenders. Clint Eastwood is Dirty Harry Carey. Hello, everybody. This is Harry Carey with Steve Stone, and the Cubs are getting the beat out of them today. Clint Eastwood gives a Hall of Fame performance as the legendary Cubs broadcaster. There's action. The pitch. Strike at the... He threw that f***ing ball right past Clark. Suspense. It might be. It could be. It is a Oh, run. Romance. Oh, look at the t- on that broad, Steve. Holy cow. Sh- Clint Eastwood is Dirty Harry Carey. Coming to a theater near you. You know, it takes all kinds of people to make America what it is today. It takes doctors. Hello. And lawyers. Hi there. Accountants. 27. And librarians. Shh, quiet. But it also takes much more than that. It also takes America's morons. Use your signal, you idiot! Good morning! You know us. Why, we're all around you. We're taking 200 items through the express lane of the supermarket. Wait, let me get my other car that's over here. We're sitting behind you in the movie theater wrapping our Christmas gifts. <laughs> and we're holding up your bank line while we try to cash a check from the Bank of Venus. Hey, pal, could you hurry it up? How are you? We're the Association of Ignorant Americans, and we're always looking for new members. So if you hate any minority, don't read much, and just love to litter, then have a friend dial the phone for you and give us a call. Just dial area code 632-626-6766 or me, I'm a moron. <laughs> Hi, I'm a moron. <laughs> it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, were you sleeping? <laughs> America's morons. We're taking years off your life. You think it's funny, <laughs> but it's not. <clears throat> I'm ready to split for some place that's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>